everyone, welcome to this update. I really hope you're doing well and we'll be talking about the front which affected the Caribbean throughout much of this week. We'll be looking at the, uh, the forecast for today in terms of rainfall activity and even the Saharan dust. There is a lot of it out there. Some of it in higher concentration is going to be reaching land areas. So we're going to be talking about that. But also, I want to delve into some updates regarding the 2024 hurricane season. So yes, it is a couple of months out. However, there is some new information or some updated information on some of the variables that actually affect the kind of activity we see. And signs have been pointing towards a very, very active season. And that confidence is only increasing. So we'll be talking more about that later down in the video. But now let's get straight into uh, what is happening across the Atlantic. So we're looking at the infrared weather satellite and there we can see that low pressure system and the associated front. So the tail of it is still around in the vicinity of the Eastern Caribbean. However, it is going to uh, eventually make its way out and dissipate with nothing much really affecting the region for the next week or so. And to kind of solidify on that, this was the updated Climate Prediction Center's outlook. We can see all these brown shadings across the Caribbean, and that is indicative of uh, below average rainfall. So things are going to be a bit drier than normal within this time frame here, going from the 14th to the 20th of February. So that is uh, what the Climate Prediction Center is showing for most of the Caribbean, these brown shadings. So there is that chance, that pretty decent chance of below average rainfall. But for now, as we zoom into the region and take a look at what is happening, we can see some patches of clouds moving by here and there over in the Western Caribbean and I'll move in through parts of the Bahamas, Hispaniola. And as a result, there may be some additional rainfall activity today. However, nothing crazy is expected across most of the region. There is a tail of that front making its way out. And here's a look at the rainfall forecast. So we can see that this map gets a little colorful with those shades of yellows, oranges, and even some reds across parts of the Eastern Caribbean islands, the Lesser Antilles, and uh, for some spots in Puerto Rico as well, there may be some substantial rainfall today, but uh, throughout much of the rest of the region, Hispaniola, Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, Cuba, over toward much of Central America, and the offshore islands, and even the ABC islands, much is not expected as it relates to rainfall activity. However, for uh, near the Caribbean coast of Costa Rica, Panama, there may be some heavy downpours at times and also for parts of Colombia, Venezuela, Guyana, Suriname, and French Guiana. Up toward the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos Islands, and parts of the Florida Peninsula as we're seeing, much is not expected either. So with the passage of the front, it's been the main story this week and now it is moving out with nothing significant on the horizon as it relates to uh, any kind of weather activity as what we've experienced this week and the residual effect that we're experiencing in the Caribbean is those below average temperatures which is welcomed by most of us but uh, temperatures should be returning to normal or what the uh, typical range is for this time of year as we head into around the next week now the Saharan dust. We're looking at the Saharan earlier forecast and this is for Sunday. We can see these darker brown shadings which are indicative of a higher concentration of dust. So as we're going to be heading into Sunday, some of that dust is going to be reaching areas such as Trinidad, Tobago. Not a whole lot, but some is also going to be in the vicinity of Barbados and even St. Vincent, the Grenadines, Grenada. And some of that higher concentration will be arriving in parts of northern South America. So the Guyanas are going to be experiencing more of that dust. So we can see that a lot more is out there. And the reason we haven't seen much of it enter the Caribbean is the frontal system with that change in wind direction. Uh, that's been helping to keep a lot of the dust out and also helping to dissipate some of it. But as the front dissipates, we're going to see more of this dust try to make it into the region. So I'll be keeping you guys updated as it relates to that. Now going on to the wind forecast for today. So things have certainly calmed down, especially since earlier this week when there were literally those tropical storm force winds in parts of the Caribbean. And we know the damage that it's done. Uh, if you've been watching my previous updates and so it's going to be a little bit windy anywhere from around 10 going up to 20 uh maybe 25 knots at the maximum as we head through today across parts of the caribbean now as it relates to the 2024 atlantic hurricane season so the hurricane season officially runs from the 1st of june through the 30th of november and so signs have been pointing towards a potentially active 
2024 season. Now I want you to take a look at this graphic here. This is depicting the sea surface temperature anomaly showing how much the temperature is varying from what is typical. So those areas in those pale yellows, oranges, reds, they indicate above average temperatures. Mean all the blue shadings indicate below average temperatures. Now here we're seeing that across much of the Atlantic, off the African coast, especially between the Cabo Verde Islands and the uh, coast, very, very warm. We're seeing those red shadings rise there and even across much of the Caribbean as well. Temperatures are above average and this right here is easily fuel for systems that try to develop those tropical waves once they start rolling off in spring and summer. Now, uh, that's not the only thing influencing development, but there are other factors as well, such as the Saharan air layer, when there is a lot of dust and dry air out there, uh, weather conditions are pretty much stable, and so it's more difficult for tropical waves to develop into tropical cyclones. So it is instability that they need, not stability. And then there's also those upper level winds. If they are pretty strong, uh, tropical systems will also have a harder time trying to get themselves together. So the most ideal conditions would be that large area of very warm surface waters for one, for two, weak upper level winds, and number three, not a whole lot of dust out there, a lot of atmospheric instability to actually assist in cyclogenesis or tropical cyclone development. And by the looks of it, uh, they will be very much present this hurricane season, not right through the season, because there are going to be times when the uh, upper level winds are a bit stronger. But overall, we may see things in favor of a very active hurricane season, a well above average hurricane season. Now, there is the ENSO, the El Nino Southern Oscillation over in the Eastern Pacific, which greatly influences what happens over in the Atlantic Basin. There are three phases. We've got El Nino phase when oceanic waters over in the Eastern and Central Equatorial Pacific are above average. We have the neutral phase, which is essentially the transitional zone. Then there is the La Nina phase when oceanic temperatures are cooler than normal. Now, we have been in an El Nino, and uh, even for last hurricane season, we were in an El Nino, and we weren't even supposed to see the kind of activity that we saw last year, but it's because of the above average temperatures why so much activity was fueled, because typically there is a reduced activity, below average activity in El Nino seasons, but that did not happen last year. So now, it is likely that we'll be in a La Nina as we head into this hurricane season, especially for the peak of the season. And that is only going to spell more and more trouble. So this is an updated graphic. Uh, this was updated yesterday on the 8th of February. And it may be a little bit difficult to understand, but on that horizontal line or the x-axis, we have the initials of the month of the year in three. So we've got January, February, March, February, March, April, March, April, May, April, May, June, May, June, July, etc. Then we've got the chance on the y-axis, those values going up. So the higher we see these different bars is a higher chance of us being in that phase of the end. So either La Nina, neutral or El Nino. And uh, we've got the colors. There's that key right there. So the blue indicates La Nina, the gray indicates neutral, and the red indicates uh, El Nino. So for now, we are in an El Nino, and it is likely that we will remain in this phase for the next couple of months. However, as we progress towards late spring, going to the start of the hurricane season, we start to see the chance of that neutral phase kicking in, going up to around 25% thereabout. And then April, May, June, we see that chance soaring. So for the start of the hurricane season, we may be entering neutral conditions. And then as we head along, Notice how that blue bar is going up, going up, going up. So that is an increase in probability of La Nina. And look at the El Nino chance just continuously going down, going down, going down, slightly going up for the latter part of the year. But overall with La Nina, there's usually more favorable conditions across the Atlantic and we already have above average temperatures. So uh, things are certainly going to be exacerbated this year should this actually play out where La Nina phase kicks in for uh, the peak of the hurricane season, which is when we see the most activity going from around late August into September and early October. 
And along with that, with La Nina, we may also see more systems entering the Caribbean. So El Nino phase uh, in last hurricane season actually resulted in many systems curving up and away from the Caribbean and the U.S. We didn't see as much impacts. So overall, things are definitely shaping up to be an, a, a very interesting year. And even though, yes, it is a pretty decent chance that we'll see La Nina and the temperatures are definitely above average across the Atlantic. There is one other factor which plays a very crucial role and that is the Saharan air layer. Is it going to be very intrusive? Will we have all these dust masses moving across the Atlantic into the Caribbean? Because if that happens, even though other environmental conditions may be favorable, that is enough to limit tropical cyclone activity. So we'll have to see how that progresses as we go along. And of course, I'll be keeping you guys posted on all these important updates re-hurricane season 2024. So that is what I wanted to share with you in this update video. Again, that front is dissipating. Not seeing anything crazy for the Caribbean for next week. Things may be a bit drier in some areas and hotter as well. That's it for right now, guys. And I really do hope that you found this video to be quite informative. However, if you have any questions, as always, please do feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll respond when I can. And remember to always be weatherwise.